Kelly to the back, filming. Is it the lady from Kelly filming? Yes, it is. Clearly, I'll have to go in disguise next time. The long-awaited Sudbury video. Well, I'm going to make you wait just a little bit longer. I've got a couple of important things to tell you before we get to the showdown in Sudbury. First off, Richmond Council Watch is up and running. Yes, the wonderful Martin, his videos are so worth watching. This £5 million report funded by the UK government is not so much absolute zero, as absolute insanity. These people are quivering with fear because on 9th of July 2019, Richmond Council declared a climate emergency. Link in the description. Check it out. Very, very good. We've also got Ipswich and Suffolk and North Yorkshire. They've just got their introductory videos, but also I hear on the grapevine that Worthing Council Watch is on its way, and I've had a few emails from other people that are planning to do it too. But do check out Martin's video in Richmond. Okay, on with Sudbury. So although I was invited to come along and give some moral support for the townsfolk of Sudbury taking on their local council, I must admit I do have a declaration of interest because Sudbury is where I shop. I don't go into Colchester unless I absolutely have to, for many, many reasons. I like Sudbury. It has three hours free parking. On the flat, you don't have to go in some ugly multi-storey. It's right there. They have a, it's a vibrant market town with lots happening and they've got lovely coffee shops and eateries. So I like Sudbury a lot. I really don't want them to wreck it. So this isn't going to be, anyway, impartial. That's my declaration of interest. Okay, so there was nobody searching people on the way in. I nearly made a complete fool of myself. There was some gentleman just loitering by the door and I nearly assumed the position and said, would you like to search me? And then I realized he was just a random bloke standing there. He didn't even work at the council. So that would have been awkward had I made that offer. Anyway, I tootled up the stairs and the room was absolutely packed with potentially dangerous pensioners. How could they have let this number in without searching them? Defies belief. Or maybe in Sudbury, they've got a bit more sense than they do in Colchester. I slid in and sat at the back and watched the entertainment that unfolded. There were two bones of contention that night. One, the district council is trying to impose parking charges on Sudbury, Lavenham and Hadley. No one in Sudbury wants to be charged for car parking. And the Sudbury Town Council voted unanimously against it. Now some of the councillors in Sudbury are also district councillors. So as you can imagine, having all voted unanimously not to have car parking charges, the town councillors who are not part of district were rather upset with those that are and then voted the opposite when they got to the district. Councillor Jessie Carter from the Green Party, who didn't appear to have a clue what she was doing or had done. For some unknown reason, she thought it'd be a good idea to have engagement with all the local villages on car parking fees. Now, bearing in mind, no one wants car parking fees, but in her head, engagement meant everyone got a chance to say that, rather than just going with the consensus, which was, we don't want car parking fees. But she obviously didn't seem to know what on earth she'd voted for and then tried to talk her way out of it when she was pinned down by Councillor Barrett. Councillor Barrett wasn't going to let this one go. And that's what you voted for, for varying car parking charges. So a week before you voted against it and at Cabinet you voted for it. So, um, yes, you are right. I think... If you look back at what I had said before, what I was voting for was for um, the consultation to be wide and field so that it would go to all residents within Baylor because I feel it affects all of them, not just those in the car parks which they're in. Um, and also what I was voting for was for it to be discussed by a minute to give them the chance to be able to speak at it, um, to be able to give questions, to be able to raise Concerned, as you said, I, I, I voted here on. Um, mm. I voted here on what it is that I that I don't think is right, and in this current climate, <coughs> I don't believe it would be beneficial to anyone in Baker for parking charges to come in. I 
I'm going to move, I'm going to move on. Ellen, Ellen, yes, you have a question. Well, it's actually a comment, and I'd just like to say to Jesse that it's not right in any climate. I mean, to say the current climate allows the gates open for parking charges in the future. As a town council, we objected to parking charges at full stop. She made a complete hash of it, and the population of Sudbury were not impressed. And neither was I, as an interloper who likes to shop in Sudbury and doesn't want to pay for parking. And here's the thing, if you do make me pay for parking, yes, I'll still come to Sudbury because I prefer it to Colchester. But rather than moseying and going into lots of little shops, I'll do what I need to do and then I'll go home again. Whereas it's nice to think, oh, no, I'll stop for a coffee or some cake. What's the lunchtime special at the Secret Garden? Those types of things that one does when one has plenty of time. The other bone of contention was they want to close half of Market Hill off to make it into a cafe culture. Basically a load of chairs and tables next to the road because they thought it worked so well in Covid. The Chamber of Commerce have surveyed over 50 businesses in the local area and it was only the pub that did want Market Hill to be closed. Everyone else didn't, including several of the coffee shop chains because they said they don't, they'd have to have an extra two staff to staff it and it wouldn't bring in enough money to cover it. They didn't mind doing it in Covid because they couldn't have people inside their establishments. So therefore they utilised their existing staff and served outside. They do not want to do both. So basically they're going to spend £10,000 boxing off this area and not having people have their free parking and they're going to basically ruin the town. Can I just say that on Saturday, a shop on the Market Hill, a long time shop that's been there for goodness knows how long, has not had any communications. They have not any knowledge of it other than what they've read in the newspaper and they are adamant that that will destroy their business if you go off the Market Hill at these times. I cannot repeat what they said about members of this Town Council. They believe you are not serving the residents, the tradespeople of this town. So basically they've got two shots at killing the town. One blocking off Market Hill and two charging for car parking. As many residents pointed out, one of the allures of Sudbury is the free parking. To add to the silliness of this idea, they don't actually have the money to install the car parking charging machines or hire the staff to monitor it. It's going to cost them more in the long run to do this. Districts say that it costs them £186,000 to subsidise this free parking. Don't quite know how they got to that figure, especially when the majority of business rates are paid by Sudbury, Lavenham and Hadley. So what they don't seem to be able to comprehend is if businesses go out of business, they are going to lose a lot more money. They are going to lose their business rates. They don't seem to care about this because they're saving the planet by not having cars in town centres that need cars. How can it be right to make a decision without going to full consultation with all the stakeholders involved in, in Market Hill, who's the car parking they rely on for their customers? It just, just doesn't seem right. That was a engagement event and it was held here in the um, Mayor's Chamber at the Town Hall. And it wasn't it wasn't um, well attended, but then that's not anybody's fault. If you don't come to it, then you don't see what's happening. There were four options put to the public on Market Hill, and option two was the option that was decided on and voted on. Yeah, but it still hasn't been consulted on. The, the town centre manager has not consulted with the stakeholders. I've been working with the Chamber of Commerce, and they, we've spoken to 53 stakeholders and they are all against this, so you're going against all the stakeholders in the facility. And I think it's the uh, council's duty to actually speak to these people before it makes any decision. We have had, since that meeting in June, there's been, this has been discussed over and over again at the leisure committee meetings, which is in the full public domain. It's been discussed as various items on the agenda at full council meetings since that date. Anybody can attend that like you are tonight. So it has been out there. It's been out there for several years. It is a pilot scheme. And at the end of the first 12 months, if we find that it's having a negative impact on the town, then we can rethink. Now, what's happening is um, there's called a visitor insight data. It's a very high tech piece of equipment and it's GPS mobile phone tracker. Is that right, Kieran? Yeah. And it will measure the town. That will be done 
throughout it, over the other periods as well, but it will be done throughout that six month period when half of Market Hill is closed. It's not the whole of the Market Hill, it's just half of Market Hill. <laughs> they won't listen to us. They won't yes. listen to you. Yes, sir, please, thank you. And it's true. You're no, Peter, there is no shouting out. I will have to ask you to leave if you're going to keep shouting out. When asked, hilariously, the mayor said that this was to rejuvenate the town centre. Everybody laughed out loud. Our one aim is to try and revitalise this town. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm from the government. I'm here to help. Please don't. Just leave it as it is. And you're going to have businesses that crash for your experiment. Yes. Yes. Come on, wake up. Woo! I was astonished that you're spending thousands on surveys when you could take a couple of people and ask the people the general public and go and ask the businesses and you've got your answer. We're right here. Ask us. We're going to have a lot to finance this, and it's going to be very difficult. You haven't got that pull. You've got the pull of the market. You just drive straight through. You will not stop in Sudbury anymore. There'll be nothing to hold you. Or you walk around here. You haven't got that holding capacity apart from. I'm just thinking, get something there. So what is your question? My question is, have you asked the finance questions, which is how much it costs to set up, because it's not cheap, um, and what is the actual benefit in financial terms? That's the question you need to ask. This town council made it quite clear there was a unanimous vote around this table that we would oppose this in every way, shape and form. And at the first hurdle, we were let down by some. So I'm sorry, I, I'm very sceptical. Whatever they tell you, you've got to look beyond that because their bottom line is, Ensla Ward, a leader of Baby District Council, wants car parking charges in Sudbury. And uh, whatever we do, uh, he won't listen to. So at the end of the day, you've got to make your feelings um, known. And if we have a public meeting, all well and good, we should we should have that. But to hear the mayor and members around this table, they're not listening to you because at the end of the day, they're still saying, oh, we're going to consult, we're going to listen, we're going to ask people. You're here, you're telling us you don't want it. The man over the back there, that's very vocal. And this is the strength of feeling out there. I don't know where all of you people are. are. Um, you don't drive into Sudbury. That's a fact. Thank you. to come to get you to listen you tell us the number and we'll turn up how many that you have another option and if you were uncertain you should have asked i haven't actually finished tim continue our conversation about, about the voting can you explain why it was that you voted one way then and jesse voted a different way if if you have no other option gotcha. uh, we have we vote based on our conscience on the situation we, we are with we don't the same no. as each other because we're brilliant. No. Jesse chose to change by one way and I don't think another. That's fine. No, yeah, yes, but you didn't you didn't say that you voted on your conscience a minute ago. You said you voted because you had to vote that way. No. Unfortunately, I just didn't I don't I wasn't convinced it was going to get through the other way. This experiment they'd intend to do over two years. So if they can't kill the high street in the first year, they're coming back in the second year to have another go and make sure they do. I think if I was living in Sudbury, I'd be very tempted to get a petition going to ask the mayor and any one of these councillors that voted for this nonsense to resign. They are clearly not serving the people. And as for those in district, well, people of Suffolk, you know what to do. Get shot of them. Replace them with people that have our best interests at heart, because this lot clearly don't.